fun times here. This is going to be a great weekend. Best part of this weekend is what happens in here in, in this room. Uh, our speaker for this, this weekend uh, is Heather Fleece. Heather is a youth pastor in Woodbury, Minnesota uh, at uh, Wooddale Church. And she loves junior hires. She spends most of her time with junior hires. Uh, and she, she loves you guys. And so you guys help me welcome Heather where, wherever, wherever she is. There she is. There you are. Great. Come on up. Thank you, sir. Yes. And she will always be, wear shorts. It doesn't no. matter what temperature it is. I have no threshold. No threshold. 40 below windshield. 40 below windshield. Same outfit. Same outfit. <laughs> but ni- nice vest. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. All right. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. I'm going to set my computer up. I want you to talk amongst yourself. I want you to tell the person next to you about your worst injury or illness. I want you to talk about pus coming out of your leg, post-nasal drip coming out of your throat, your worst injury or your worst illness. Go, tell somebody. Fifteen seconds. Make sure everyone gets to share. Okay, bring your attention back up here. In case you were wondering, when I was in eighth grade, I played in a softball game. It was in Minnesota, ridiculously hot in the summer, so I refused to wear pants. I wore shorts, of course. And um, you're going to find out that this is really strong. I'm not just strong for a girl. I'm strong for a human being. But this doesn't run fast. So when I got up to bat, I just... My desire was to hit it over the fence every time so I wouldn't have to run fast. And I cranked one to left field. And then I just started booking it, like wah, wah. And I remember rounding second base, and I saw the girl in left field. She had the ball, and she was about to throw it to third. But I'm like, I'm doing it. And so I ran from second to third, but saw the ball coming, and I thought, I need to slide in my shorts on a gravel diamond that had not been treated, (laughs) slid into third base with shorts on. I was safe. I got home later. It was amazing until my legs started throbbing, and I had a large red ring around this large area that started pussing and oozing. I ended up with staph and strep infection in my leg. They had to scrape it with an iron brush. But it was okay because they put this numbing spray on it. So I was like, oh, that doesn't hurt at all. They're like, now you have to do this three times a day at home. I'm like, okay. But they didn't send the numbing spray with me. I woke up the next morning. My sheet had adhered itself to the pus. So I had to rip the sheet off before I scraped it with a wire brush. So... Thank you. <clears throat> Puss, now let me introduce myself a little bit more. <laughs> my name is Heather, and like Larry said, middle schoolers, junior hires are my favorite people in the universe. So you can line up cute little babies with like chubby cheeks all the way to old people with purple hair, and I would choose you every time. Like a little creepy almost. Like I'm at the mall, and I'll see you, and I'll be, I don't even know you, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> and you're like, crazy lady. Why are you saying hello to me? I'll comment on your shoes or your hair or your jacket or whatever. I love teenagers, which is why I'm here. And we're going to spend a lot of time together. And so I hate it when speakers come in and they're like, blah, 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 blah. And they leave and you have no idea who they are, where they're from, what they look like in seventh grade, what their favorite muscles are. Those things are all very important to me. So I brought some pictures to help in the process. So let's do this. Let's first talk about the natural condition of my hair. This is my kindergarten photo. I want you to look at my bangs in the photo. 
Okay, now look back at me. <laughs> back at my bangs. That is the natural condition of my hair. Back at me. I get a perm every three months to make my hair look like this. If you don't know what a perm is, ask your grandma, because she's getting one and I'm getting one, but we're really the only ones in the tri-state area getting perms. I think curly fits my personality, and literally till the day I die, or even after, I will get a perm. You think I'm joking? In my funeral notes, which by the way, I have all laid out in a Dropbox, it says if I am not on my proper perm rotation, <laughs> that my body will receive a perm in the casket before the open casket at my funeral. That's how serious I am about my curls. Okay, let me introduce you to my family. This is my Uncle David's wedding. And <laughs> everybody I like to think got the memo that day as far as the color scheme, except my brother Glenn. He's like, dude, I'm wearing the plaid, and I don't care. <laughs> and that's pretty much been his attitude his entire life. Now, I'm the baby in my family, which means I'm the one wearing the large bib. I had no choice in the matter, but girls, you'll understand this. I was the flower girl that day. So I was like, I don't care. I'll wear anything if I get to be the flower girl. That's like a life goal for all girls. By the way, I'm officiating a wedding in May, and the bride and groom asked their grandmas, who are both in their 80s, to be the flower girls. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, totally off the side. Okay, uh, what else? Um, uh, I have to show you my, our, our church directory photo. This is mostly for the adults in the room um, because this was our Olin Mills church photo directory. So students, there was a time when moms didn't coordinate outfits where it was just like a freestyle in, in the Heinz family and that was the truth. Um, I think we have fashion issues and I blame my father because he was the leader of those fashion issues. Who let him out of the house that day looking like that? That's me in the middle, right where I should be, because I'm the baby in my fake Princess Leia braids, and I love being the baby in my family. Um, I grew up in the 80s, as you can probably tell from my seventh grade photo. I was wearing stirrups and flats that day. Stirrups are basically yoga pants that are a little bit looser, but they have this elastic thing that goes underneath your foot for securing. They're fantastic. And seventh grade was where I started to realize I was not normal. So all the other girls wanted to like talk about boys and do their hair and go shopping and put on electric blue mascara. And all I wanted to do was arm wrestle, shoot guns, play football, and hit things. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do. And I will tell you that those things have only increased as I have gotten older, okay? Um, but I told you that I am a junior high pastor. That's what I do in Minnesota. And I love junior high. And one of the reasons I love it, and get this, you don't even realize this is happening. There is a crazy amount of change going on in you right now. They say the only time in life where there's more change in you is when you went from infant to toddler. Think about an infant who can't do anything for himself and then a toddler who can like walk and like pee by himself and all that kind of stuff. There's no more time of change except for that than in middle school. So I started to think to myself, did that happen to me? Because I don't really feel like I changed much. Okay, guys, check it out. This is seventh grade. This is eighth grade. <laughs> okay, maybe you missed that. Hi, <laughs> I'm 13. Hi, I'd like to teach your Spanish class. I look like I'm 30. Like, what happened in 12 months? Adolescence happened, middle school happened. So it's happening right now, and you hardly even know it. Um, I grew up in an interesting family. My dad was a long distance truck driver. He drove an 18 wheeler cross country. This is our Christmas card photo. Okay, like who does that? That's me pretending to be a hood ornament. I'm wearing pajama pants and a sweater. I don't know why, but I thought it looked cool that day. And as you can see, this one we tried to coordinate. Do you see my brother Glenn? Just the rebel over there on the far left doing his own thing. Okay, um, I was a cheerleader. Ah! You can probably tell, I'm a little excitable. Here's why I was a cheerleader though, don't judge me. Number one, it was socially acceptable to be loud, and I am. Number two, I got to be closer to the boys. <sighs> I really liked the boys. <laughs> now, in Minnesota, where I grew up, we had hockey cheerleaders. So we literally did things like stunts and dances on the ice. We did the splits on the ice. And I will just tell you, once you commit, 
you're going down. <laughs> so, like, ah! and you'd go all the, sometimes painful, but so fun. Um, I played fast pitch softball, I told you. Started in seventh grade, played all the way through college. And um, I love to hit things, remember I told you. So softball was great. But then I was like, wait a second. I got a bunch of buddies that are playing football. And they hit people. And those people fall down and then people applaud for them. Why am I not in on that game? <laughs> so I begged my mom to let me play park and rec football with the boys and my mother is very different than I am and she's like, my daughter will not play. So all of my life I had this aggression building up inside of me to hit people legally and you can. So when I got to Bethel, they had this thing called powder puff football. Some schools even have it like in high school. It's girls against girls. It's mostly an organized chick fight because I'm sorry, no offense girls, but most girls don't know how to play so they're like, Wee! I knew how to play. My brothers had taught me well. And so this game, like, just consumed me. It was only one game during homecoming, but it, like, became my life. I'd wear, like, black stuff underneath my eyes. The guys from the football team would take us out. We'd hit sleds and run routes. <sighs> I'm a really nice person. But when that whistle blew, nobody was my friend. I was out for blood. And people think I'm being dramatic, so I brought proof. This is from my junior year. <laughs> As you can see, it was supposed to be flag football, but I'd like smash through the line, fall on the quarterback, and be like, oops, here's your flag. <laughs> Sorry about that. I love it. To this day, I love football. I love to watch it. I love to play it. I am a Minnesota Vikings fan, even on the hard days, and there are so many hard days. Yeah, I know, I know. But hey, listen, listen, easy. The Holy Spirit is bigger than the border battle. I love football, so I watch all three games on Sunday, watch Monday night, have the NFL Network watch Thursday night, like I love football. Okay, what else do you need to know? Oh, I love nail polish. I own 319 bottles of nail polish myself. I'd love to say this is my collection, but I was actually at the OPI nail polish factory in North Hollywood, and this was the display room, and the woman brought me in, and I almost started hyperventilating. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, just take the picture. <laughs> I brought 12 bottles with me this weekend, and I am super excited to paint anyone's nails that wants their nails painted. Um, tonight I am wearing, on my primary finger, Susie needs a locksmith, and on my accent finger, boys, pay attention please to this, is called All Merry and Bright. Gentlemen, I want you to look at my finger. This one right here. The next time you see your friend, a girlfriend, your aunt, your mom, your grandma, and they have one fingernail that's different than the others. It might be a different color like mine, maybe some glitter, maybe a design. I want you to just go, hey, I love your accent nail. I'm just saying, it's going to take you far. Lock that in your brain. I have an entire room in my house dedicated to my earthly hero, Tigger. If you came to sleep in my guest room, you would sleep among 118 Tigger items currently. Some of them are motion detected, so he talks to you when you move, which is a little creepy, but still super, super fun. <laughs> okay. What else do you need to know? I love NASCAR racing. I love anything that goes fast. Jet skis, snowmobiles, full throttle all the time. I own 98 pairs of shorts. I own one pair of jeans. I've worn jeans once in the last 25 years. Our house is set at 58 degrees. So the heat only comes on when it gets to 57 degrees. I'm hot all the time. I brought all shorts this weekend, but I did bring one pair of leggings because I got this really cute new camo hoodie and I want to wear it and it looks really cute with my new boots. So I might wear it tomorrow, but I will sweat the whole time that I'm wearing it. <laughs> but it's super cute. Oh, I do have favorite muscles. Um, Jono, I didn't ask you, but can I move out here? Okay, hi, who are you? I can call you who? Lenny Penny. Lenny Penny. What's your given name? <laughs> Lennon. Lenny Penny. Lenny Penny, I have two favorite muscles. One of them is my forearm. Just go ahead and give that a hit. Right, Lenny? And then look at my other one is my anterior tibialis. Just go ahead and hit that. 
Look, I have one on the other leg too. Lenny, come on. Lenny, I am very passionate. I love my muscles. I love your muscles. Would you be willing, could you flex your bicep, and could I be impressive? Can I be impressed? No, I think he needs to stand, doesn't he? Don't you all want to see his bicep? Lenny Penny. Are you right-handed? Yeah, okay. Give it up, come on. See? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Lenny Penny. So, sometimes, sometimes when I introduce myself, I think people think in their mind, certainly this woman's single. <laughs> like, she probably lives in an apartment with like 17 cats because like, who can handle that? I'm excited to tell you there's someone who can. This is my husband, Chad. I call him my schnookie. Um, we've been married almost 21 years, and I, thank you, I adore him, and I did not think I could love him anymore, and then he surprised me with this. <gasps> Do you know what that is? That is a St. Bernard puppy. That is a mini Beethoven her name is Jingle Bell. That's Bell with an E because she's kind of fancy. In this picture, she's four months old and she weighs 48 pounds. And guys, she just kept getting bigger and bigger. My husband is six foot two. That's Bell in front of him. She's 148 pounds. She poops bigger than your head. And if you don't get the slobber before she shakes, it literally goes onto the ceiling and swings back and forth. But get this, she wasn't enough. So after one year, I started begging for a second one, and I won. This is baby Hadley. Look at her. Oh, come on. This is our family. Three years ago, you guys, this is the latest photo of our dogs. <laughs> Um, on the left is Hadley. She currently weighs 180 pounds. She weighs more than the majority of you in this room. And that's us, and that's me, yes, sitting in shorts, and the, the three of us could not even be happier. Okay. If I'm what? Yes, of course we're on the snow. Why wouldn't we be? And yes, I'm in shorts, and yes, I'm wearing tiaras and a Viking sweatshirt. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I love to know, we, Jono, we can shut off the um, screen now. I love to know and be known. So my goal this weekend is to get to know you. And so I am going to be hanging out at the meals. I'm going to be hanging out during your free time. I plan to do the evening trekking with a headlamp. Hello. Never done that before. Um, so please come and say hello to me. Let me paint your nails. Um, I would also be willing to arm wrestle you and beat you in the name of Jesus. I'm highly competitive. And I just want you to know you can offer me up the most strong living sacrifice in your cabin, and I will beat him or her. Okay? All right, cool. Okay, bring your attention back up here. Bring your attention back up here. Sorry, I got you riled up. I'm a big believer in a lot of things, and I want to tell you three beliefs I have for this weekend. The first is that I believe in you. I believe you are the best group of people in the entire universe. I believe that you are capable of so much more than most adults give you credit for. And you're gonna hear that in my teaching and you're gonna see that hopefully in the way that I relate to you. I get that you're 12, 13, 14, some of you even 15 years old, but you can handle so much more than people think that you can. And I'm excited to see that. Third thing is, I believe that you are here by God's hand this weekend. So you might think that it's a fluke that somebody else dropped out and you got in. You might be here because somebody's really cute this weekend and you're hoping to make a move. You might be here because your parents strongly encouraged you to be here. I don't know why, but here's what I know. Psalm 139, 
verse 16 is David talking to God and he says, all my days were ordained for me and written in your book before one of them came to be. So translation, every one of you is here by God's hand and God is not going to waste it. And so my hope is that you don't waste it either. He's got something for you this weekend. And like Dan said, you can listen for it, you can watch for it, or you can waste it. But why would you want to waste it? So Lord, that's my prayer, that we would lean in this weekend and we would just want to see why it is that you have us here. And so God, I ask that you would do just that in our times together, that you would open our eyes to what it is that you desire for us to know about you. Okay, look back up at me here. I know that this COVID season has been ridiculously tough for students. And I've talked to a lot of students and I've asked them, what's the hardest part? What's been the hardest part about the last year and a half, the last two years? And I have two collective answers that I think, but I'm curious what you think. So turn and tell somebody next to you, if you had to narrow it down to the one thing that's been the hardest, what would you say that it is? Adults, you're included. Everybody talk to somebody, go. Okay, bring your attention back up here. Especially during the first few months when I talk with kids, they would say, I just miss seeing my friends. Like FaceTime is great and Google Meets and Zoom and all that kind of stuff, but they were just so bummed because they couldn't hang out with their friends. And during junior high, Friends take a status, take a level of status that they haven't before in your life. And then as it continued, kids would say, I'm just so tired of being disappointed. <laughs> like they're going to say, I think the tournament's going to happen. I think the trip's going to happen. I think we're going to be able to do this. And then it would get canceled. Or then it would be modified. Or then you'd have to go back to hybrid. Or then you'd have to go back to online. And it just felt like disappointment. And I bet some point in that time frame, an adult might have said to you, well, disappointment is a part of life. <laughs> and I hate to tell you, but they're right. And I remember the first time that that came, became really real to me was during my junior year of high school. I told you that I was a cheerleader. I told you that I'm naturally loud. But I haven't told you yet that I was in choir. I love to sing. It's the only instrument that I can play. <laughs> and I loved to play it in choir. Choir was second hour. And I remember it was the best class of the day for me. But about halfway through my junior year, every time I went to choir within about 10 minutes, I couldn't sing anymore. And I, I was drinking as much water as I could. I was trying to like sit up straight and use my diaphragm and all that that they tell you to do. But I would lose my voice. It was almost like I had laryngitis every day, every time I tried to sing. And I was so frustrated, and my teacher was frustrated along with me, and then after a while, he said, Heather, I think we need to go get your vocal cords checked out. And so he organized for me to go see this ear, nose, and throat specialist. My family couldn't afford it at the time. This, he got the school to cover it, and I went up to the cities, and I went to go see this doctor, and it was quite traumatic because they had this camera that was on this, like, string, rope, cord. And he said, okay, well, we're just going to numb your nostrils and then we're just going to put this camera down your throat. And I was like, why, why are you pointing up my nose to go down my throat? Did you know that your nostrils are connected to the back of your throat? That's why when you have a stuffy nose, that post nasal drip drips down the back of your throat and then you hawk loogies, which is one of my favorite things to do as well. I can hawk a loogie really far. So, they numbed my nose, and then they're like, okay, just relax. And then they're like, zoom, zoom, zoom. and there this cord goes up my nostril, back down my throat. They told me to swallow, so I'm like, mm, 
swallowing this camera. So weird. And then it gets down in between my vocal cords and they go, okay, now go ahead and sing a note. And I went, <laughs> what? But the crazy thing was, as I tried to sing, I was watching the screen and there were my vocal cords. And you might not know this, but your vocal cords are supposed to go like this. So when you talk, they vibrate together and the sound comes through. But mine didn't look that way on the screen because I had this big bump here and a big bump here. So every time my vocal cords tried to go together, there was a bunch of space like this and that's why air was coming through and that's why it was sounding like I had laryngitis. And I was told that day that I had vocal nodules, calluses that form on your vocal cords due to abuse of the voice, <laughs> AKA, you're really loud all the time. <laughs> And they told me, Heather, if you want them to go away, you have to quit cheerleading. You have to not talk to anyone unless they're within arm's distance from you. You can't sing with the radio. You shouldn't go to restaurants and try to talk over the loud noise. And you've got to limit your singing. And for the first time in my life, I felt like something that had given me value and worth and identity was taken away from me. Because I told you I like to sing, I was actually pretty, really good at it. And when concerts would happen, I would often get the solo, or even if I didn't get the solo, people would rave afterward about like how expressive I was and how amazing my voice was and how my solo was, and it really made me feel good. I was asked to sing at weddings and to sing at like um, fashion shows and stuff when I was 16, 17 years old, and all of a sudden, I couldn't sing anymore. And so much of who I am is in my voice. So I want to ask you, in that moment, did I lose my worth and my value? In that moment, did I lose who I was? I know logically speaking, I didn't, but I felt like I did. So I want you to turn to somebody next to you. And by the way, we're going to do this often because I believe that you can do it. I believe you've got great thoughts to share. And I want you to make what I say personal to you. So please don't waste the time. What is something that if you lost it in your life right now, it would make you feel like, wow, I have lost some value. I have lost some worth. I have lost some identity. I have lost some self-esteem because I don't have this anymore, I can't do this anymore. So for instance, if you're a big athlete, what if you tore your ACL and you were out for nine months? Okay, what if you are a big academic person and you suddenly had a brain injury and you couldn't look at screens and you couldn't read and you couldn't process like you used to? So what's something in your world that if you lost it right now, like I lost my voice, it would be really hard for you. Tell somebody, go. Everyone's talking to somebody. Guys, you talking? You each shared? Sure. Okay, wrap up those conversations. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd love to get five distinctively different answers. What did you say? Somebody raise your hand and tell me, what did you say that if you lost, it would be really hard for you? You, sir, stand up right there. Okay, you're a swimmer. Okay, so... Stand up again, please. Sorry. By the way, when you stand up, I want you to say your first name and what grade you're in, okay? Hi, Levi. Levi, what is an injury that is common for swimmers? In a muscle. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Levi. Uh, right here in the red, go ahead and stand up. 
What grade are you in and what's your name? Awesome. To ski. Okay, thank you, Sawyer. So I would guess something with your knee. There again, an ACL or a tear or something like that. Okay, ladies, where are we at? We need some representation right here, hun. Stand up and turn around. Tell us who you are. Okay. Okay, dancing and ice skating because that's how she expresses herself. Adults, I need somebody. If you lost it today. Students, you can actually volunteer your adult. Who do you want to volunteer? Okay. Okay. All right, gentlemen, you go ahead right back here behind the guy in the blue. Okay. Shh. Tell us your first name. Hi, Brent. Brent, how old are you? Congratulations. Okay. Okay. If you lost a family member. Awesome. Ladies, one that's distinctively different, that is very different than something that's been said before. Right here in the beige, I love your enthusiasm. Stay standing. Name? Honey, sit down. Nope. Nope. Back here in the plaid, go ahead, stand up. Tell me your name. Say it again. Zaya? Zaya. Cool. Grade? Shh. Awesome. What would you have a hard time if you lost the ability to do it? I can't hear you, sweetheart. Okay, to ride horse. All right, good, thanks, you can sit down. Students, you may not understand right now, I hope to make it more clear, but all of us desire to find our worth and value. It's a natural desire that we have, but we look for it in the wrong places. And if you're willing to lean into this weekend to what not only I have to say, but what the word of God has to say, you will be leaps and bounds beyond your peers and life will hold a different kind of meaning. And I believe that you will be saved significant disappointment and even trauma in your life. You know, some people think that the Bible is like antique, that it has no relevancy to our world. I'm amazed when I read this, when I think it could have been written today that the words are so true. And plus it's really fun in certain parts. Do you know that in Proverbs it says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Have you ever seen your dog go back to eat its own vomit? I have. I have. And it blows my mind. I'm like, ew, it's still steaming and there's like dog fur sticking out of it. But think about it. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. So somebody who's not wise does something stupid over and over and over again. I hope you brought this this weekend, and when you come back tomorrow morning, I want you to bring it because we're going to dive into a passage that talks to us about where we find our worth and value. But for tonight, we're going to be sending you back to small groups. And I have given what I think are very fun and insightful questions for you to share. One of them is, how are you and me alike? And how are you and me different? What are the something that's the same about you and me? And what's something that's different about you and me? From everything you heard me say, what's something that you're like, oh, dude, me too? And what's something that you're like, you are crazy, you're weird, I can't even imagine being like that. <laughs> but you get to share something like that along with a couple other cool things. So leaders, please, this is where you get to make things personal for your kids. And students, I'm excited for you to do that. So I'm gonna pray a blessing on your time together and then Larry's gonna come up and tell you what to do, okay? So Lord, I just claim that everyone here in this room is here for a reason and on purpose. And God, you've promised not to waste it, so I pray that we would not waste it either. God, protect this time. Allow us freedom to be who we are and to have fun and to be kids and to just enjoy life. But may we leave here on Sunday different than when we came 
because we've experienced you. In Jesus' name, amen.